हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम मनोज कुंडारे द असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक साइंस वेलकम बैक टू आवर ई लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन द वोल्टेज डिवाइडर बायस टेक्निक ऑफ द बायसिंग ऑफ द ट्रांजिस्टर द लिंक ऑफ द प्रीवियस वीडियो इज अवेलेबल इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स प्लीज चेक इट नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द कंसेप्ट ऑफ डी सी लोड लाइन द डी सी लोड लाइन the straight line drawn on the output characteristics of the bjt amplifier which give the dc value of the collector current ic and collector to the emitter voltage vc corresponding to zero signal that is dc conditions known as dc load line since the slope of this load line is decided by the value of dc collector load resistance of the bjt amplifier is known as dc load line that means dc load line is a straight line which gives the values of collector current and the emitter to the collector voltage description of the dc load line consider a npn transistor ce amplifier circuit where no input ac signal is applied therefore dc conditions prevail in the circuit the output characteristics of the circuit are shown here this is the transistor amplifier in ce that means common emitter configuration and this is the diagram of dc load line okay the battery vcc sends a collector current ic through load resistance rc and the bjt q there is some voltage drop across the load resistance rc due to the flow of collector current ic the polarity of this voltage drop ic rc is shown in next figure the remaining voltage vc drops across the collector to the emitter junction of bjt here is the circuit diagram of amplifier circuit in common emitter mode is shown in which the ac signal is applied across the base terminal the base is act as the input while the collector is acts as the output okay this is the dc load line and this graph shows the transfer characteristics on this graph this line shows the dc load line on this load line the point q decides the operation of the bjt while the bjt is operated as an amplifier or as an closed switch or as an open switch applying kirchhoff's voltage law to the outer loop that means to this output loop we get vcc vcc equal to icrc plus vc okay by using kirchhoff's law we get vcc equal to ic rc ic means collector current rc means the collector resistance plus vcc vce vc stands for voltage across collector and emitter okay now we rearrange the terms of this equation and put it is as ic equal to minus 1 upon rc vc plus vcc upon rc after rearranging this equation after this rearranging this equation vcc equal to icrc plus vc we get the equation ic is equal to minus 1 upon rc vc plus vcc upon rc we write this equation in above form because we wanted to put in the form y is equal to mx plus c this is the equation of straight line now this equation is plotted on the transistor output characteristics that is the curves between vc and ic and we get a straight line by comparing this equation with this equation we get the slope of this line is m equal to minus 1 upon rc and the intercept on the ic axis is given by c is equal to vcc upon rc 
the straight line represented by this equation is called as the DC load line. The DC load line is a line on the output characteristics of the transistor circuit which gives the DC values of IC and VC corresponding zero signal or zero conditions. The DC load line for a BJT as an amplifier is shown in that figure the operating point Q is shown on this DC load line. Okay. This straight line is a DC load line and this is the operating point or the question point. Okay. Now let's see the next concept thermal runaway and heat sink. If the temperature of the collector base junction increases the collector leakage current ICBO increases. That means if the temperature of the collector base terminal increases then the collector leakage current also increases. Therefore collector current increases the increase in the collector current produces the increase in the power dissipated at the collector junction. This will further increase the temperature of the junction and so gives a further increase in collector current. This process will be recycled. It may destroy the transistor due to overheat. This is described as the thermal runaway of the transistor. That means the thermal runaway means if the temperature of the collector base junction is increased then the collector current increases. If the collector current increases then what happens then the power dissipation is also increased. If the power dissipation increase then the collector current increases and more heat is generated across the junction. Due to this, it is possible that this junction may get destroyed. Okay, This phenomenon is known as the thermal runaway. In practice, thermal runaway is avoided by well-designed circuit for stabilization. For transistor handling small signals, the power dissipated at the collector is small. Such transistors have less chance of thermal runaway. In power transistors, the power dissipated at the collector junction is larger. This may cause the junction temperature to rise a dangerous level. We can increase the power handling capacity of a transistor. If we make a suitable provision for rapid conduction of heat away from the junction, this is achieved by using a sheet or a metal called as heat sink. That means by using heat sink we can reduce the heat produced in the transistor. The heat sink is nothing but a sheet or a metal piece. As the power dissipated within the transistor is predominantly the power dissipated at its collector base junction so the power transistor is connected to the metallic case. The case of the transistor is then bolted onto a sheet of metal. The sheet serves as the heat sink. This heat sink increases the area from which heat is to be transferred to the atmosphere. Here heat moves from the transistor to the heat sink by conduction. That means the heat sink is used to reduce the heat heat generated in the collector base junction okay, by using the conduction process. The heat sink transfers heat in the atmosphere hence the temperature of the electronic device that means the temperature of the transistor remains constant. Due to this the transistor cannot be damaged. For maximum efficiency the heat sink should be in good thermal contact with transistor case. It should be have the largest possible surface area. It should be painted black. It should be mounted in a position such that free air can flow past it. Okay, That means for maximum efficiency heat sink should be in good thermal contact with transistor case. If the heat sink is not in good contact with the transistor, 
then no heat is transferred towards the heat sink the second condition that it have it should have the largest possible surface area the largest possible surface area reduces the possibility of the damage due to the heat because the largest area collects the large heat and this large heat can dissipate early the next factor is it should be painted black because black is the color which radiates more heat energy or which accepts the more heat energy okay and the fourth parameter is that it should be mounted in a position such that free air can flow past it for the conduction process i hope you all understand the thermal run away and heat sink thank you